What is up, DG Army? Netherwood, also known as John, back this week with some more uh, strategy series for you. And this week I'll be doing the new PZ4. It's new as of 8.0. They've done a lot of change. There's been quite a bit of changes to this tank. Um, first off, really, let's go over the changes. The changes are to the turret, uh, which used to have 120 millimeter plate in the front uh, front plate there on the turret, and is now down to 50, which is even lower than the hull, which is weird. So about almost in third, a third of the armor. And also has had its main gun reduced from, I think it was 130 pen, 135 damage, to now 110, 110 damage, uh, pen and damage. Really bad, um, basically huge nerf to this tank. Um, what it does have on the sides anyway, and a little bit in the front here, which, yeah, I guess it's covering that one plate there, uh, is the spaced armor, which does help a tiny bit, but not really, because it's 30 millimeter side armor, so, on this turret, so, I mean, it doesn't really help. Uh, not compared to the old turret it had, which was the old Panther turret. Again, since it did not have that historically, it does make sense to do this nerf, uh, now to historically accurate, but there's tons of tanks in this game that are not historically accurate, uh, like, let's say the short 10.5 on the pan uh, Yog Panther. It never had a short 10.5. It had the long 88. Um, same thing with the, the uh, Tiger II. I'm pretty sure all it ever had was the long 88. So, again, not, uh, not historical. Um, lots of tanks are not historical in this game. Also, the Tiger I probably would be Tier 6 or Tier 5 even. Uh, if you looked at when the Tiger actually came out, it was fighting a lot of uh, lower tier tanks. But again, this, you know, you have to sacrifice some stuff to make the game more fun. It's just funny how they choose what what the game de developers decide to choose on how to make the, the game more fun, while also you know going away from historical accuracy to make the game more fun. Um, but the way you're going to play this tank is a lot different now. If you've watched the first um, yeah, uh, B, uh, PZ4 video, and I'm putting a link on the screen right now. Uh, is that this thing basically has no armor anymore, so you, there's no such thing as sniping or not moving around. You play this tank a lot like you play an M4 Sherman. Um, the M4 Sherman is a little bit better, I think, because it does have more mobility than this tank, the PZ4. Uh, it definitely has a lot more acceleration and stuff. M4 Sherman was, was built to flank. The PZ4, I don't, I'm not really sure what it was meant to do. Back when it came out, though, it really dominated the field. Uh, again, it was up against like Tier 2, Tier 3 tanks. Um, so the Germans were just way ahead on tank uh, tank um, tech in the beginning of the war, and actually most of World War II, I would say they were pretty much ahead. Toward the end, they were getting pretty. Everybody else was catching up, and then obviously post-war tanks, which are like tier eight, nine, and ten. Well, pretty much nine and ten. Um, and ger the Germans fall behind, and that's a lot of that is because what the Germans would have developed in like the 50s and 60s and stuff obviously since no blueprints were ever made it's really hard to say what they would have come up with but I'm sure the mouse would not have been it uh, anyway so the PZ4 basically the way you play it, it's a kind of a run and gun tank which is a little bit weird uh, it's a little bit of a sniper and a flanker and basically stay in cover all the time and just don't get shot at basically if you get shot at you're gonna get your uh, whatever is shooting at you is gonna go right through this tank is pretty much butter um, it does have 80 mil in the front on the front plate, that's kind of nice. Uh, extreme angle there, that's nice. But again, you can shoot right at this flat part of the, uh, the front plate here, or the lower plate, or the, the front part here with the machine gun turret and the uh, driver hatch, or the driver viewport right here. It's going to go right through. Also, the turret, I mean, you don't even have to shoot at the hull. Just shoot at the turret. It's only got 50 millimeters of armor. So, Or the cupola. That's a nice, huge cupola right there. Again, I'm not sure if that's uh, historically accurate. Let's, I don't know if it is or not. We're not going to talk about it. Um, so that's how you kind of play this tank. I, I use this tank more as a scout now. It's not really... In fact, the PZ-34 is actually a better tank than this now because it has a lot of mobility. It doesn't have good armor, and it has a pretty poor gun, but it has the mobility. And this tank has none. It doesn't have any good qualities. Um, I guess people think the spaced armor is a good quality. It's really not. So, I mean... Any tier five shell is going to go through there and just jack this guy up. So, um, so that's kind of how I play this tank. I'm very cautious with it. I let a lot of other people scout things and I try to flank people with it. And really, you're just going to want to get through this tank because now it's no more. It's not fun to play anymore compared to the old uh, PZ4. And so, just like I had this thing, I was keeping it. I actually was going to get camel for it and everything. And I actually had camel on it and I got camel reimbursed. 
and I'm not going to keep this tank now. I'm going to sell it because now it's a hunk of junk. So I will still be keeping the Tiger, even though the Tiger is a hunk of junk. It's just fun for historical accuracy uh, to have this tank. This is the tank I wanted to play ever since I started this game. It's really bad. It's really too bad that it's tier 7, which it really... It's for game balance, it makes sense, but it would be nice, you know, I don't know, historically, this thing would have tore people up, So and, and it did. Um, so anyway, that's how you play the PZ4. Let's get into some uh, stats here. 460 hit points, pretty standard for a tier 5, uh, tier five medium. Um, 440... Let's just make sure I have all the upgraded parts here. Good, okay. 440 engine horsepower pushing 25 tons. It looks like it has pretty good acceleration, but it might be because this thing has is might be bad with terrain or something, but it doesn't feel very mobile to me. Uh, the, the stats would sh show that it is pretty mobile. Um, it's got okay acceleration. It just doesn't feel as fast as like the PZ-34, which is a lot better. Uh, the T-34 has a lot better mobility. I would say the M4 has a better mobility. This has really pretty much poor mobility. And really it made up for it before with the nice turret and the nice gun. But now that it has poor mobility and crap turret, crap gun, uh, yeah, it doesn't really have much going for it. So uh, 48 top speed, I never really get to that. Probably in the low 40s. 38, 32 traverse along with the 44 turret traverse. It actually does have decent traverse. Uh, it just doesn't have great uh, acceleration. It's okay. Armor, again, not much, maybe in the front, but again, there's so many flat surfaces, it's going to go right through whatever shell's fired at you. So it's got pretty bad armor. Just keep moving. Try not to get shot at. If you're trying to snipe, make sure you back up. If people start aiming at you, you can't rely on your uh, turret armor to take any shots. Um, 350 view range, not horrible, but not great. It's probably about pretty much average. Um, so that's not too bad. I guess it could be worse. 710 signal range, signal range on the radio. That's pretty good. That's all you're gonna, ever going to need, and that's pretty much what tier 10s have. And you can see this is a tier 9 radio. So let's go into modules now. I'm not going to go over weak points because this is not a tier 7 or above. 710 meter radio. I think you should have that. Yeah, you're pretty much going to have that from the PZ3, I think. Yep, PZ3. So you should already have this radio. Or does this actually... I think the... Te oh, 38NA. Let's look to see what radios it has real fast here. So it does not have the. Uh, it doesn't even tell you what it's supposed to be on. That's interesting. So I don't think I don't think you're gonna have this radio actually. 38 NA. No, pretty sure not. We'll go over that in the tech tree. Uh, so you're gonna have to start out with the, I think the Fug 7 you will have. Man, so many tanks had this had this radio. Apparently they never upgraded the radios. Well, they didn't really need to because Germans were also way ahead on radio, uh, on the radio in the beginning of the war. Uh, I don't see it. I don't see it on here. Maybe you will. That's interesting. You're going to start out with this junk tank? This junky one? Well, you might. Anyway, um, I'm not sure which radio you're going to have. I didn't actually go up that line. I went up the P. This used to be connected by the PZ3. So, FUG 37, FUG 5, FUG 8. Let's go look at what this tank has. So you will have the okay the Fug Five. So you're not gonna have either these, either of these radios. Three ten meter radio is really a slap in the face. It's pretty crappy. Um, you're gonna want to upgrade that radio pretty quick, but I'm not sure you're gonna be able to. Depends on the um, uh, speed at which you're gonna research on different areas of this tank. We'll talk about that in a little bit. The tracks get you a thirty uh, two degrees per spec per second uh, increase to uh, rotation speed. That's kind of cool. Which is kind of pretty much like every other tank. Let's see what kind of, um, no, you're not going to have that either. You're going to, what are you going to have? Like the crappiest gun on this thing? Apparently you are. That's just very interesting that you're not going to have a good gun at all either. Because they, when they switched this over, they should have made some of the guns from the other tank come up. Yeah, see, that's pretty sad because that means you have to start off with the stock five centimeter gun. 67 pen, 70 damage. I mean, they're begging you to spend gold to, to XP your way through this tank. I think that's another reason they did all this. Because I don't... I mean, they should have changed some of the guns so that it comes from the 38 NA. Not the stock gun. That's really horrible. Um, see, it used to be that this tank came off the 3. So you'd have some modules unlocked. But now that it doesn't, they should have switched that with the NA. I don't care if it's historically accurate or not. They should have done that no matter what. Because it just makes the game more fun and more balanced. Um, yeah, you're going to start out with this this crap gun. So, that's horrible. It's going to feel like crap, and you're going to hate this tank when you get it. Sorry. Germans suck. What else can I say? Um, 
you are going to want to, well, I, we'll just talk about how you're going to do this later, but this is a great gun, the L48. Uh, well, not a great gun. This is the best gun you're going to get, probably. 110, 110. Uh, it's pretty accurate. Uh, the aim time is not too bad. Actually, the accuracy is getting up there, but it's not too bad. It's actually pretty accurate. Uh, 2.3 aim time is pretty good. Um, a lot of people will put this 10.5 uh, on there because it does have, you know, HE damage on it. I don't get very good damage rates out of it. Plus, the accuracy is pretty bad at 5.5. Five. That's a really horrible accuracy rating. Again, just like the Hetzer. The aim time is the same, which is kind of nice. But again, the way HE mechanics work are... Uh, you half the HE damage first of all, so that's going to go down to 175. And then after that, you take the enemy's armor that you're hitting and you times it by 1.3. So if you're shooting at 100 millimeter armor, it just became 130. And then you subtract that away from whatever's left over after you half the damage. So 175 minus 130 is 45 damage. Not very good. You have to hit a weak spot. And with this kind of accuracy, you need to be in their face to hit a weak spot. And with this kind of armor, you don't want to be in their face. So unless you're shooting them from behind. You need to flank them and never get hit and drive right up to them and, and basically take your chances. Um, personally, I like the L48 in terms of, uh, again, I don't like taking gambles, especially with a tank that's so hard to grind through as this tank. Uh, I, I like this gun because I can flank and stay back and let the Russian tanks take care of most of the, the work and take the shots and all that stuff, and I can just snipe whatever shots I can get. Um, that's how I play this tank. So that's pretty much the stats and also the modules. Let's talk about some research. So here's the PZ4 tech tree, and right off the bat, the thing you're going to notice and probably uh, really hate the most is that you're not going to start out with anything unlocked. None of the modules will be unlocked for you because the the PZ4 apparently uses equipment from a totally different line, which doesn't make sense as of how the 38A would be the uh, child to this tank since it doesn't use any of the same equipment. Um, as far as non-stock. I don't care about stock. I'm talking about unlocked equipment. Uh, so the first thing you're going to want to do is probably go after this first engine since it's so easy to get at 710 XP. And that will give you a slight bump up from this uh, 320 engine. It's not a big bump up, but it is real easy to research. Right after that, I'd probably go up the gun line because your gun is so bad. I'd probably go right up to the L48 as soon as you can uh, and get that 110 da uh, pen, 110 damage. After that, I would go after the second engine. Well, I'd probably go after the second radio after that. Um, because this 310 is not going to be enough. The 415 will give you a little extra play with the radio toward the end of the game. And you'll be able to radio and see uh, the allies and also see enemies and radio positions back to your allies as they shoot the uh, enemies and get more XP and credits that way. And especially if you're trying to scout at the beginning of the game, which I like to do, and I'm going to show you that in one of the games. Um... So again, first, or I'm sorry, second engine here, L48, second radio. After that, I'd probably just go for the second engine here, get your full mobility unlocked. I probably wouldn't even go worry about this uh, turret because it doesn't really matter. Um, I don't think, yeah, you aren't going to need it for the L48 because the turret comes after the L48. So after you get the second engine, uh, I'd probably get the second radio and then get the tracks, uh, unlock everything else. And then I would go for your tank of choice, either the 3601H or the 3001P. So that's how you're going to do this tech tree, and it'll be off to the side here. Let's get back to my garage. So we're back from research, and I don't get equipment on this thing, but this is pretty obvious. If you did, I would get the uh, the vent, which this will not work when you get up to the heavies, um, because they will use the class 3. The rammer, which is medium, when you get to the heavies, you'll be using large caliber. Again, that will not upgrade to the heavy line. And then I would probably put a toolbox on it because your crew is going to be so bad that you're going to want to repair those tracks when you get nailed, especially with a tank with this poor armor. You're not going to be able to bounce in shots or anything. Um, you can also put binox if you're trying to use this 110 and kind of snipe. It will help a little bit. Uh, but you will be moving a lot, so you probably won't get the binoc bonus that often. So you might want to use the coated optics ex instead. Again, a lot of this stuff will not be what you use on the main uh, when you get your heavy. Um, and that's pretty much what you can do as far as equipment. Um, it's for um, ammo. I, 6 HE seems a little high to me. I'd probably go with 3 or 4 because HE, especially with the low caliber guns, doesn't do a lot. doesn't really matter. You only really use it when you're resetting a cap. Um, if you have the 10.5, it's going to be all HE. Um, I might have gone 6 here because there's 81 shells, so 6 is fine. 
Um, for consumables, on tier 5 and 6, I do do small repair kit. And on 7 and above, I get a full rack. I get a um, fire extinguisher, small repair kit, small heal kit. And that's pretty much it. When you get your crew, these are actually a little better crew than you should probably expect. I ground out this tank quite a, lit, quite a lot. Uh, when you move from tier 5 to tier... Well, they probably will look like this, 87%. Um, maybe even 90% when you move them over. So your crew should look about like this. Let's get a couple games, show you what this tank can do now. So here's a good game I had on Runeberg and Encounter Mode. And this game, I, I do, again, want to show you both different kinds of guns. In this game, I had the 10.5. Uh, it's very hard to use because, again, it's very situational, and you have to really get perfect uh, positioning really to use it, which is massively flanking the enemy without getting hit, um, being able to pop out right in someone's face kind of and jack them up. Um, does not happen all that often in a tank that's as easy to kill as the PZ-4, even with fully unlocked equipment as I have here. So I'm going up the flank side, figuring this is where the lighter tanks are going to be. You probably won't see the T-29 over here. And it looks like a lot of their team is coming this direction. Try to get the scout. Again, not a very accurate gun at .55 accuracy. So those kind of shots rarely hit. Um, I got really lucky in that Hetzer game if you just saw the previous strategy to this one. Um, usually you should not expect those kind of shots. Now, with the 10.5, we really want to be shooting at the side or the rear of a vehicle. Or like this, the side of the armor there. I got like over a little bit over 100 damage there. That's a pretty decent shot for this for this uh, gun, especially at that kind of range. Really, what I'm trying to do is let people move up a little bit because I can't just run out there; I'll get just myrtleized. I remember I don't have any armor or anything, uh, so I got to make sure I don't get caught out in the open. Also, don't really have a lot of ability just to get get out of uh, harm's way very quickly. I mean, it's not bad; it's not like it's a KV-1 speed or anything, but it's definitely not zippy like the PZ-34, where you can kind of snake around and stuff. Turret, I found, gets jammed a lot in this tank. Um, it seems to get jammed on me every third game or so, which is kind of a lot for, for a tank. Usually the turret does not get jammed on me very often in other tanks. Um, it could be because people are firing HE at me, which I don't know why they would. This tank doesn't have any armor, so... I was trying to get a good shot on this scout, but without just basically wasting the shot. So I'm pretty determined to get the scout. He's scouting our team, just and BAM! A nice hit on him on the side. Shell goes right through and lights him up. So it looks like we had a breakthrough on this side, but now we've got people capping. So we need to take care of the side quickly so we don't get flanked and then go into the bait into cap, and that's kind of what I'm doing here. Moving toward the center lane of this map. Again, with full HE loaded like I have here, all I have to do is barely hit the enemy, even if it's module damage, it'll reset the cap, so that's kind of why I'm zooming in here, figuring it's kind of my job to uh, do just that. Got some heavy equipment up here, T20. T25 is a gold tank, it gets lit up. KV-1 used to be a, a KV-1, and a uh, PZ-4 would be pretty good facing off with each other, even with the new, the, uh, downgraded KV-1, I think that'd be pretty um, pretty even battle, but now there's no way a PZ-4 can fight a KV-1. Yes, you can beat them, I'm not saying you can't, especially if the KV-1 driver's horrible, which a lot of Russian drivers are typically horrible because they don't have to be really good at the game for their to win. Their tank holds up for them. Now, there is a side shot directly into the Chafee, or Chaffee, I'm not really sure how you want to say that. And I got full HE damage because my shell penetrated fully on the side armor. M3 Lee, another tank does not have very good armor. I got full damage on that shot. Again, on tier 5 or so, you're going to get pretty good damage with the 10.5. But I don't load up my guns hoping to get a same tier battle. Because it rarely happens, especially at the lower tiers. You should be... Can, you should be basically putting the gun on there so that if you get in a tier 5 battle, it works. If you get in a tier 7 battle, you're still fine. So, in my opinion, that's the L48 more times than it's the 10.5 here. I kind of want to get rid of that T20, but I don't want to get sandwiched between the KV-1 and the T20. Because right now, if I drive, or the T29, sorry. If I drive out there, the T29 is just going to one-shot me. Well, maybe not one-shot me, but I'll be pretty much dead. Surprised the T20 isn't coming out here more to, to kill us. He basically leaves his T29 buddy high and dry. Now, if he'd have came out here and jacked me up, he could have helped support the T29, and maybe they could have taken those guys out.
but I don't know what he's doing, just kind of jacking around. Again, a side shot on the armor like that can really hurt these tanks. If they give you the, your, the front plate, you're not going to get much damage, probably 100. But the side plate is going to be ridiculous. Trying to sneak out here and get some shots off on whoever I can. Again, this is, a, this is the range you want to be at. Nice damage right there. I'm not sure uh, what kind of damage I got because the 100 M1 did shoot at the same time. I probably got about 150. And I'm going to try to pop out and help him, but he's right in my way. I was trying to save him, but he saves himself. Cool. So that's this game, and let me show you the end play to this thing. So here's the end play to this game. Um, survived, that's good. 987 uh, XP, and that's because I got some big, nice hits on like the uh, couple of tanks here, namely that uh, Chaffee and like the T20 and stuff. That gets me a lot of XP hitting those higher tier tanks. And I'm just showing you kind of the damage you can expect from the 10.5 if you do hit guys in the side and get nice pens on them. Uh, damage while like, spotting helped a little bit, but it was mainly the damage from the uh, the 10.5. Now let's look at the team score. 658 XP. Uh, that's pretty good for this battle because I was it was a tier 7 battle to be third on the list for XP. Uh, detailed report. I got uh, nine shots, only six connected, and again, that's from the accuracy. Nice credits at almost 20,000. You can make some decent credits in this thing. Now, 12,600 if I did not have premium. Uh, 792 damage caused off a 460 damage tank, or hit point tank. Very good. That's double the damage. Great. Game. Here's another great game I had on Erlenberg in Standard. And you can see I'm platooned up with DG Army. Shout out to DGA. Gray Matter 51 and Smith were my two teammates here. And I wanted to platoon us all into PZ4s to kind of show you what you can do in a, in a wolf pack with this thing. These uh, tanks. This is pretty much your... If you can platoon with other guys in this tier, that's really what you should do with this tank. And that way it shores up a lot of the, uh, the bad qualities of this tank because you are not being aimed at as often if you're a good player. You've got a couple of other good players with you to kind of take some of the heat to. Now I'm going to show you what I think you should do in this tank. You play it a little bit as a scout. I'm going to come up here on this south ridge here and try to scout as many enemies as I can and you're going to see when I show you the end plate um, how much XP that got me. Quite a bit. It's going to be very noticeable. Already an uh, enemy goes up in flames. Apparently he didn't like this battle because he's a tier 4 and it's a tier 5 battle which is not that bad. Um, so I'm driving up on this ridge and right here a lot like a lot of other maps you can you can spot a lot of enemies doing this you just gotta make sure you don't you barely pop up enough to see you don't need that much of your turret um, above that line to see people so here's a T46 gotta get him out of there he's scouting he's dead obviously tier 3's are gonna be no problem for this tank now this is a tier 5 game so there I scouted 3 or 4 guys you'll see when the end plate comes up how many guys I scouted um, and remember, you want to scout them, be the first on your team to scout them. That's where, where you get the XP and credits. If you're the second guy, it doesn't matter. You don't get the extra bonus. It doesn't really matter. So I'm trying to scout for these guys so they can kind of snipe. The PZ4 is trying to make a sneaky style move. Not a very good idea anymore in this tank. Because you don't want to expose yourself. Your armor is pretty bad. PZ3-4, a better tank now than this tank. Uh, which is kind of weird that the PZ-4 has rough, roughly a similar penetration and armor values since it's supposed to be going up the medium line. It's supposed to be more of a lighter tank and be more of a scout, but it has the same uh, similar armor and penetration values. That doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, whatever, though. Okay, so PZ-3-4. Let's get him right in the back. Bam! So, pretty easy to take out. Try to get another shot on him before... before uh, gray matter kills him like he just did again I don't really care that other people get the kill I know a couple times that I think Smith or somebody said hey sorry I still the kill but I said you know there is no such thing as kill stealing in a, in a team game the only time it happens is if someone's purposely holding their shot to get the kill don't do that it doesn't get you any XP in fact it probably gets you less XP than the guy who shot just before you because if they did two or three hundred damage and you did 50 and to kill the guy they just got way more credits than the Union stuff because it's all based on how much damage you do, not how many kills you get. So I missed there, kind of unfortunate. Could have killed him. I do get ammo racked quite a bit in this tank, so you might want to be careful with saving your um, your um, repair kit for that. I can't remember what I used it on already in this tank. Probably one of the tracks when it got knocked out. Even from the side, a KV-1 is difficult to hit in this tank now. That's why I say the KV-1 will eat this tank's lunch. 
You see how he's just driving out in the middle of nowhere? Like, no, I'm not worried. That's because the KV-1 is a very strong tank, and if he wasn't tracked, he could be getting getting away with this and probably uh, pretty much tearing people up. But we do luckily track him, and it takes four of us to take him out. I mean, it doesn't take four of us, but that's the reason we took him out. A PZ-4 would have been dead almost immediately trying stuff like that. So don't do that in this tank. If you're in Russian, you know, more like the KV line, you can be a lot more aggressive. You can just drive out and actually use a tank the way it was intended with armor. Um, if you're in these little tiny German tanks, they aren't going to bounce anything. Not at least till you hit tier 8, probably. You're not going to really get any bounces. So, here's the Bison. I figured that T-50 would have already taken him out, but he's playing around a lot with him. So, Smith gets the kill. Nice. So, now we've got 5 out of the 9 kills. We're doing pretty good. Pretty lucky shot here, but also shows... The accuracy on the 110 being a lot better than the 10.5 uh, to make a shot like that at 450 meters at the at the uh, turret on an M M10. I hit him in the gun there. I don't know what it did. It might might have knocked out his gun. That would have been sweet. Churchill, do not go one on one against a Churchill in this tank. You're gonna get juiced. Yes, you can damage his his turret, but he's gonna shoot so fast, and I think he has the same um, penetration and damage as you do but on a much faster gun. It might be a little less damage, but again, the gun is much faster, and you don't have any armor, so he's going to penetrate you every shot, especially if he shoots you in the turret like a smart guy would, um, like you're shooting him in the turret. It's going to be very easy to take you out. You only have 50 millimeters of armor in the front of that turret. All the spaced armor, if you'll notice, is on the sides and the back of the turret, which is not what you should be showing the enemy anyway. There is not a lot of spaced armor in the front where people are going to be shooting you. Again, face palm on that. Why would... Anyway, whatever. Penetration. Penetration, but it's tracks absorbed it probably. Side of the turret is a no-go. The front of the turret seems to be weaker than the side of the turret on this tank. Thank you for turning your turret toward me. The Churchill doesn't seem to have a mantlet. It seems like you can shoot it right through the gun just as easily as any other part of the front part of the turret there. I think also the front part of the plate in between the tracks is pretty weak on the church. I'm not positive. Um, I see people shooting at it quite a lot. So the, the what I'm trying to do here is keep the church, uh, keep his attention off me, and Grey Matter's taking a lot of beating right here, uh, as long, along with the other teammates, so we can kind of trade damage. Again, we have to gang up on this tank. It's a tier 5, but it's worth two PZ4s probably. Uh, it's so badass. So. Anyway, that's a great game. Let me show you the end plate to this. Here's the end plate to that game I just had with the DGA. And as you can see, I'm showing you all the damage I did with the 110. And you'll see on a lot of tanks, it's very similar to the damage that I got with the 10.5. But I got really lucky. It took me a long time to get a good game in that 10.5. So you can see, I scouted four guys. Got a lot of XP for that. Let's sort, we, did, we did the top three on XP. Uh, nice kills. We got eight out of the 15 kills. Great little game here. 14 out of 21 shots, and that's because I was shooting at such long ranges, 450 meters, 500 meters. Lots of damage. 857 damage out of 460 hit points. Very good game. Uh, it's almost the same credits. So that's this tank. Let me know what you think about it, and I'll talk to you guys later.